So it's time to sew together our Misty Morning Summer Sew Along. What you're looking at are all of my blocks, the ones that I've made as we worked along together this summer, and they're all just placed on my design wall. They are not sewn together, they're just laid out in the order that they need to be sewn together. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a design wall, and if you do, I think this is the easiest way to assemble this quilt. But if you don't have space for a design wall, then you might want to consider using a spare bed in your house or laying them out on the floor so that you can kind of get a look at the quilts so that you can make some changes if you feel like it. I made a change and I think I mentioned to you a couple times that this fabric right here, this B fabric in my quilt, I only had small pieces of it and I had enough to make the whole quilt but when it came time to make 48 half square triangles I didn't want to cut it all up and have to do them in a more tedious way. I wanted to use the triangles on a roll. So I went and got different fabric and replaced that fabric. So you can see it, it's a much paler shade of lavender. Now, when I looked at the quilt, I thought these looked really bold in the center now that I've softened the other colors. So I've gone ahead and made replacements. Same block, but in the lighter lavender colors. Now I realize on camera it looks very, very pale, but in person it looks much better than it does on camera. So the other piece was bold and easier to photograph, but in person I really do like this light lavender much, much better. So if there's one of your uh, fabrics that you think sticks out too much or you think you want to make a change, now's the time to do it. Also, the um, print that has the little hydrangea on it with the aqua background and the purple flowers. That's really my theme fabric for this particular fabric selection. So I'm considering, haven't decided yet, but I'm considering remaking that one nine patch in the very center and putting that fabric in there. Now I know that um, I have enough of that fabric because I have yardage of all everything that I put into this quilt except for my latest replacement. So I can make some changes now if I would like. If there's something in your quilt that you think sticks out or you're not happy, if you're not happy with it now, you probably won't be happy with it later. So if you're going to make some changes, now's the time. But it's a nice idea to get it all laid out one place where you can kind of step away from it and see how the colors play together before you make those changes. So now we're ready to sew it together. You have to have all of the blocks made for this quilt before you can sew anything together. So now we're, we've got that task at hand. The easiest way for me to do it is to use my design wall and lay everything out like this so that I know that everything is oriented in the right direction, my angles are all going in the right direction, all of my blocks are in the right place, and then just start and sew them together. To be honest, normally I would sew my uh, quilt together in columns. So that means vertical rows rather than horizontal rows. I prefer to do it that way. My reasoning behind that is you've got fewer long seams when it's vertical on a rectangular quilt. Now in this case, it's two more seams. So I would have, let's see, I would have um, eight across this way, eight long seams this way, but 10 if I went this direction. But I know that sometimes people have a really hard time grasping the concept of sewing this direction rather than this direction. So let's just talk about this as if I was going to sew it together in rows. So I would take the first row, the top row, and sew block one and two together. So from row one, one and two. Take them to my sewing machine, sew them together, and now they're under my needle. I don't want to cut my thread between each one. I want to have something under my needle constantly. So I could go get another project that I'm working on and sew a, cup, a piece of that together in between. But um, there's usually a thought process that goes along and I don't want to be thinking about two different projects at the same time. So I could just sew some simple squares together because that's kind of thoughtless. You don't have to concentrate on what, how you're doing that. But I also have to sew all of these blocks together. So I, instead of sewing across a little scrap, 
would rather put two more blocks together. So what I do is take one and two and sew them together. While that's gone through my machine, I want to put something under my needle, so I'm going to go to the bottom down here and sew one and two from the bottom right corner together. The last two blocks in the last row. So I'll sew those together. Take one and two off and add three to it. Sew that block number three onto the first row. Now I'll take blocks one and two, or the last two blocks from the bottom row, and put them back in place. That's all I do, just those two together. Then I work my way up the quilt. So the second to the last row, I'll sew those two together. Come sew those together, and then take my section and add number four to it. So I'm going to sew all of my pieces together in pairs. So I'm sewing them in pairs so that as I work my way down the quilt, sewing my rows together, some blocks are already pre-assembled because I took the time to sew them together rather than just sewing across a little scrap. So that's the way I sew mine together. So I just keep working up and go to the next row, work up, work up, and by the time you get about two-thirds of the way through the quilt, everything's together in pairs, and then you can just assemble your rows much quicker. Now you're creating new seams when you sew your blocks together. So you need to press those in a specific direction. Most standard instructions will say, press the first row to one side, and then press the next row in the opposite direction of the previous row. So you establish which direction the first row gets pressed, and then the next one just goes in the opposite direction. So if it went to the right, then the next one goes to the left, then the next one goes to the right. For this quilt, um, because it's symmetrical and it's a center medallion quilt, I kind of would prefer to press out from the center. We have a center row both horizontally and vertically. So for the top row, from the center block, I'm going to press out. In row two, I will press in. In row three, I will press out. And then after my rows are assembled and I'm ready to put the quilt together, working from the center row, I will press them out. So all of those rows will get pressed out and all of these rows will get pressed down. Okay, so we're going up and down and in the first step we'll go out, then in, out, then in. Now they are your seams. You can press them in any direction you would like. There's nothing wrong with pressing every other row in the opposite direction. There's nothing wrong with pressing them any way you would like. So, but I like when it lays on the bed, I like to see some kind of a symmetry to the way that they're pressed. Now that's getting really picky, honestly. That's getting really picky about things. But that's just the way that I like to do it. So they're your seams, press them however you would like, but let's make sure that they all nest and things will come together very neatly. So you can put yours together in columns or rows. You can put them together one block at a time. I suggest that you lay it out that way and then just pick them up so that everything is oriented in the right direction. But I also know that not everybody has that much space in order to be able to do that, or you don't have a spare bed or a design wall that you can use. Well, if that's the case, I've provided you with layout diagrams. There are three different layout diagrams. You'll get a copy of this one, and these are, will all be available to print out in our files section. This is the entire quilt laid out with all of the blocks next to each other the way that it will look when it's assembled. I don't think this is the easiest way to use it, but everybody likes to have a copy of that. If you need to lay them out, I like to have my blocks separated so I can see where they go. So this is what we call an exploded diagram. So this is the same layout. It is the exact same if there's just a space between every row and every block, making it a little bit easier to see which block is which and the direction that the angle should go in each individual block. So this is the way that I would normally choose to do it. I know that some people have a problem with relating my color on the chart to their fabric. So I also provided you with a black and white version. So this is all of the blocks laid out and there's a number on each block. That number corresponds to the number, block number, when we made them. So 
Block one is in the center and it's surrounded by blocks five and six. So you can go to your stack of blocks that you've made and select the ones that go in the right position. All of the numbers on here are blue just so you can see them, but it's in black and white so that if you would like to take crayons or color pencil or a marker or something and color in what color your blocks are, if that makes it easier for you, then you have this available to use. But personally, I would rather use the exploded diagram when I lay mine out. If it's confusing to look at, I suggest you do this. Take your diagram and fold it so that you only see one row. Then lay out that one row, sew that one row together, and then move on to the next. So when I move on to the next row, I can refold my paper, but I can also go ahead and just cover up so that you're only looking at one row at a time, all right? And that'll help keep you organized and help you remember which direction things need to be oriented as you sew them together. So you have lots of reference material for how to lay it out, how to put it together, and how to sew those blocks in order. Now, let's talk for just a few minutes about borders. On my original quilt that you saw when we started this project, after I had sewn all of my blocks together, I decided that I wanted to add a floral border to it. So the border print that I chose was the position from this fabric right here. So it's fabric C on our list. Fabric C, if you look at the diagrams, fabric C is in this position right here. It's the darker blue. It is the only color that doesn't touch the outside edge of the quilt. So if I wanted to add that floral border right up against the side of the quilt, it wouldn't blend in with any of my piecing because it doesn't touch the outside edge. So you can add your border that way. I chose to use what we call a float border or a, an inner border. I cut a two and a half inch cut, finished at two inch, white border to go around the outside edge to kind of give us space, a little breather border, so to speak, around the outside edge. So you can do the same thing. And all of this depends on what fabrics you have in your quilt. Yours might look, your border might look great right up against the quilt, but you should have enough of your background fabric left in order to cut those strips and piece them together. They'll cut across the fabric. I cut mine at two and a half so that the two inch related to the two inch blocks in our quilt. And then you can put your border on on the outside. Now for this particular quilt, it's a different quilt, different fabric selections. I know I want to use what I call my theme fabric around the outside edge, but I'm not sure I'm going to put that background border on. I think I'm going to put a lavender border around and then that one will be maybe one inch and then another border of one of our prints, which would be two inches. And I'm gonna put a nice big, probably cut eight and a half inch border of the other around the outside edge. What that's going to do is give me a nice wide border so that when I quilt the quilt and I put it on my bed, I can see how much it's kind of shrunk up and then I can cut it to fit so that I'm sure that this is gonna fit the twin size bed the way I want it to. If you remember back in the beginning um, on June 23rd's video, I discussed how to fit the bed and how to make sure that it fits right. So if you're planning on having this fit your bed, you want to make sure that you're accounting for enough drop on either side so you cover the sheet and the break in the mattress and you allow extra because quilting will pucker your quilt up a little bit and shrink it. And then when you launder it, depending on what kind of batting you put in it, it may pucker up even more. So you wanna make sure that the quilt's gonna be large enough that it will fit the bed properly after it's been quilted and washed, all right? So you can put your blocks together, put your border on it, and I'm looking forward to seeing photos of all of them pop up here in the Nine Patch a Day group. So you'll find the layout diagrams in our file section here tonight all three of them, feel free to print out whichever one works best for you. And I can't wait to see your finished quilts.